My name is Jonathan Goforth with Keller Williams Platinum Partners, and this video is on encumbrances. So there are three different videos I'm gonna do for this topic because encumbrances involves a lot of material. At the end of each of these, I'm gonna have test questions. So make it to the end, practice these test questions with me. Uh, the three different topics for three separate videos will be easements, restrictions, and liens. So make it to the end. And then at the very end, the next will pop up on your screen. You can just click on the next video, go right into these. These questions, these test questions, this material is good for all 50 states. Doesn't matter what state you live in, these questions and this material is fair game for your real estate exam. Please subscribe, give this video a like, and let's jump right into what is an encumbrance? What is an encumbrance? I want you to screenshot this slide. What is an encumbrance? That way you've got an image of this in your phone. You don't have to watch the video over and over. Although I would love that, but that's not an efficient way to study. So what is an encumbrance? It's a claim against an asset by an entity other than the homeowner. It's something that burdens or limits your title. That's what I want you to remember. It's something that burdens or limits your title. Some examples would be liens, easements, leases, mortgages. These impact the use and the transferability of the property. So stick with me to the end. I'm gonna divide this into three separate videos. At the end of each video, we're gonna do some test questions so you can see how encumbrances are used in different ways that you can see on your real estate exam. This should help you pass. Please subscribe, give this video a like, and uh, let's go into the um, how this works. My jacket was becoming an encumbrance. I had to take it off because it was being a burden. It was limiting my ability to move. And so because the jacket became an encumbrance, it had to go. And that's partially because I've gained a little bit of weight, my jacket's too tight, and also to give you another gimmick in a way to remember what an encumbrance is. It's something that burdens or limits the title and the ability to transfer ownership. So an easement is a great example of an encumbrance. What is an easement? I want you to screenshot this. An easement gives somebody else the right to use part of your property while you still keep the ownership rights. They do not get possessory rights. They just get the right of ingress and egress to come and do whatever it is that that easement is for. So again, screenshot this. An easement gives somebody else the right to use part of your property while you still keep the ownership rights. There's three types of easements. So let's talk about these three the most common one that we think of because we're selling property are the appurtenant easements. So let's talk about what that is first. You got two vocabulary words here. You just learned what an easement is, but now let's talk about what is an appurtenance. I've got a great, a great video on what are appurtenances. You need to watch that because I got test questions about that. These are two words, especially appurtenances, you must know. You're probably going to see questions about what's an appurtenance. So basically an appurtenance is something that what you think of is it runs with the land. That's a phrase you hear with the word appurtenance. It's an improvement or a uh, right or an easement that is attached to the property. And as the property sells, you go on a listing and you sell that property, the appurtenances automatically transfer with the land, like mineral rights, water rights. Uh, improvements to the land would be a shed, uh, a, a, um, the house itself. All these things are appurtenances that are improvements on the land. So in that case, an appurtenant easement is something that would run with the land. Uh, all the different famous types of easements that you hear about they transfer automatically. Utility easements, all those kinds of things. Maybe this land has been landlocked. There's no access to it, to a road. And so along the way, there was a uh, an easement attached to the property 
giving uh, access across the land in front of it so they could put a driveway from their house, which maybe sits behind another house, and it gives them an easement to drive on someone else's land. Those are appurtenant easements. Number two is a gross easement, or you can hear it called easements in gross. These are personal in nature. An example of that would be uh, billboards that are on land. They are not tied to any specific property. They are personal in nature. Usually they're owned by a person or a company. They are uh, commercial in nature. Those are gross easements. But yeah, a billboard would be an example of that. It's not an appurtenant easement. Number three is an easement by prescription. Now, this is something very unique. This is something where someone is using someone else's property without permission. It's a notorious thing, but they're using someone else's property. It's continuous. They do it all the time. Hunting is a good example of this. It's done openly and in clear view. So that's an easement by prescription. And if it fits all of these things, then that's what that could be called is an easement by prescription, but it has to fit all of these, it has to be done all the time, done openly and in clear view without permission. The homeowner is not giving permission to do that. It's an easement by prescription that's using someone else's property. Those are the three types of easements. And what are easements again? A great example of encumbrances. That's what we're studying, encumbrances. The last thing we're going to talk about with the easements is this slide. So go ahead and screenshot this one. And after this, we're going to do some test questions and practice with this, help you pass this exam. By the way, my handwriting's horrible. It just gives you proof that you don't have to have really good handwriting to be a successful real estate agent. I've got a video. I'm, I'm, I want to remake it again in a few weeks. Another reason you should subscribe on how to make a million dollars in real estate. As you, as a real estate agent, how can you make a million dollars and more? That's how much my team and I were paid last year and the year before. Um, we sell a lot of property. And so it's just another reason to subscribe. This is so short term, studying for this exam, going to pass it. This is a blip in the length of time you'll be a successful real estate agent. Having fun, doing all, real estate is the most awesome job. It really is. Um, <laughs> cannot, just to describe how cool this job is, I got to be in Forbes magazine as one of the top market leaders in the country in 2019, 20, and 21. That's published by um, Five Star Professionals. But it's the American Dream TV show, Selling Kansas City. They brought it here this fall, and I get to be one of the hosts. So if you want to see some, they're lifestyle stories, but there are a few really neat houses I, I get to show off. Go into my, my YouTube videos and look at some of these American Dream TV episodes. They're just, you'll, you'll see my fancy suit. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about, let's say, let's say, for example, you do have somebody who is hunting or they want to hunt on your property. And you don't want this to turn into some kind of an easement situation. So you give them a license to do it. In doing that, you are giving them, this is a license. Or let's say somebody wants to go camping on your property. You, they're going to do it every year. So they say. So you just want this to become a temporary situation where it couldn't turn in to a possible easement situation. So you can give permission instead of the right if you want to stop it later. Hunting is a great example of this. You can give a license, which is uh, something that you can revoke later. And that's how you give permission instead of the right if you want to stop that later. You do that through a license. Could be a test question. Now, last thing I want to talk about, this is a great vocabulary word, is encroachment. The way I think about an encroachment, it's trespassing. It's bad. An encroachment is bad. Think of it as the word roach. Nobody wants roaches. If you get roaches in your property, they're trespassing. You do not want them there. 
Examples of an encroachment would be tree limbs hanging over somebody else's property. Or, oops, they put their fence a few inches into somebody else's property. Those are encroachments. Let's say it's, a, it's, it's horrible and they've built um, a, a large outbuilding three feet or more onto somebody else's property. This is a really expensive outbuilding and you've got a property line dispute. Um, it's possible that an encroachment can turn into an easement. Let's say that happens. Well, you've got a fight and the one homeowner wants you to remove it. Well, you're not about to knock down a $60,000 outbuilding. So sometimes you can get together and turn an encroachment into an, eas an easement. And then the easement can pass uh, when the property sells. It's part of an appurtenance then. But that's what I want you to remember. An encroachment is trespassing. Anything that encroaches onto somebody else's property is trespassing on it. Uh, a driveway, oops, they poured it too far over and it now encroaches onto somebody else's property. We had a situation like this a few years ago, selling some acreage. There were no fences, but somehow the neighbor uh, had their the, a septic tank, their lateral field, come to find out, was encroaching about 10 feet into the neighbor's property. Nobody knew this, but in the process of doing a um, stake survey to put up a fence, they realized, oh my gosh, the lateral field encroaches onto the next door neighbor's property. And the, the way that got fixed, you know, there's quite a bit of land in between. Uh, they did an easement. And that became a, a situation where the lateral field didn't have to be dug up or, and moved. So there's ways to, to fix that if it's something that both sides will agree to. Thanks for watching. Let's do some test questions. Again, please subscribe. Give this video a like. And let's practice how you might see this on your real estate exam. This is good for all 50 states, in case you're wondering. Read along with me, please. Homeowners are having a detached garage built to the southwest corner behind their house. After having a stake survey completed, the following would be an example of an encroachment. Number one, the garage was built six inches within the property line. Number two, the fence along the south is right on the property line. Number three, the fence along the west is extending six inches over the property line. Number four, all of the above. Well, number one and two are okay. It's built, number one, it's built within the property line. Number two, it's on the property line. That's fine. It's not encroaching over. Number three does. It extends six inches over, so your answer is number three. Number three is a good example of an encroachment. Next question. An owner gave a group of people permission to fish and camp on the owner's property. This would be called, one, a license, or an encroachment, or a Liz Pendens, or an easement. And that is an example of number one, a license. So now you're gonna see a couple of uh, uh, screens pop up that you can click on. Those are links to additional uh, questions about uh, this topic. And so feel free to click on one or both. And then in addition to that, go into the description of this video. Just look down underneath and you'll see the, the description. It might even say dot, dot, dot more, and you could click on more and it will pull up more information. You might have to click on more again <laughs> to pull up more information. And in there, I'm going to put more links to a whole bunch of test questions, uh, math questions, and just test question videos to help you pass the exam. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, please give this a like and please subscribe. Thanks.